Hey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. I'm really excited about this. Uh, eight Steps to Forgiveness takeover on Queens Recognizes Queens. How is everyone feeling? Hi. Hey, Ev. <laughs> so I just want to give maybe like a few more minutes, maybe a couple more minutes to um, start off these eight steps. If you do not have feeling great, sis, I'm doing well. <laughs> um, if you do not have a pen and paper or pen and pad, notebook, um, I advise you to grab it now. Um, of course, we're going to have a Q&A at the very end of this live chat, but I think that is really important that um, you do write everything down, one, because it becomes real once you write it down, and two, you know, I need you to have this once the live chat is over. Um, also, while we are, thank you, while we are um, going over the eight steps to forgiveness, if you have any questions, write the questions down. Um, I'll try my very best. I love being interactive, but I'll try my very best to answer the questions as I go. But because I may not see them, because I wrote the steps down myself, um, not that I don't know all of the steps, but again, I am, I practice what I preach. I write it down because it becomes real to me. Um, so, Write your questions down, and then once we do the Q&A, then we can, um, you know, you can send your questions in, and I'll answer to the best of my capability. Does anyone else have a drink? Are we sipping? Are we excited? What do you have? Did you, what did you eat for breakfast? I mean, I'm going to go in in another minute or so, but I just want to make sure everyone is comfortable and relaxed and ready for this. <laughs> Thank you, Ev. Thank you so much. I have to get used to uh, the waves. I haven't been on live in so long. I almost forgot how to do it. Hoo, hoo, hoo. What are we on? Like 40 seconds left? Making sure we have everyone here. Water and champagne. <laughs> Where's my water and champagne? I need some. Champagne sounds good right now. All right. If you have friends or family that you believe uh, can receive something from this live chat, text them now. Text them, inbox them, send over uh, Queens Recognizes Queens page, and let's all do this together. Let's all work on this together. Um, send a memo out ASAP. I'm probably on like 15 seconds right now before I begin. So if you can send out all of the information, if you can send out all of the information now, please do so so we can get everything started. I don't think I should be this excited. <laughs> or should I? Woo! Yesterday, I went to um, uh, a live taping for YouTube, and we spoke about this. So I hope you guys can receive it just as much as I receive it and everyone else receives it. All right. Pen and paper. Pen and pad. Just say, I wave. Let me know that uh, you have your pen and paper ready so we can get this started. Three seconds. Two seconds. Yes, yes, you have your pen and paper. Yes, I'm happy, cat. All right. So, um, like I said, I wrote this down so you may see me going over my steps before I tell you I am not uh, focusing on anyone or anything else but this live chat. All right, so um, today we'll be going over eight steps to forgiveness. 
Um, I came up with these eight steps about a year or so ago, I believe, um, as we spoke on our last Sunday chat with Ebony on Queens Recognize Queens, we spoke about healing being nonlinear. Um, there's no straight way to go. It doesn't look any particular way. However it is for you, um, it may not be the same for others, but about a year or so ago, I knew that it was time for me to step back into uh, forgiving. Forgiving not only family, friends, or people that I was in a romantic relationship with, but also forgiving myself. Uh, forgiving my mom, forgiving my dad, because as we continue on with life, you know, some things come up that necessarily didn't trigger us before, trigger us before, but now we're triggered. So, hey, beautiful. Um, so when it comes to forgiveness, <laughs> hey, we tend to hold on to hurt, traumas, pain, because we forget that in order to heal, we must first forgive. Um, not only do we forgive ourselves, but we need to forgive the culprit, the one that's attached to the anguish, the pain, the trauma, the hurt that we've experienced. So these eight steps to forgiveness is not only going to allow you or give you some assistance on how to forgive other people, but also how to forgive yourself. So the first step, step one um, to eight steps to forgiveness is search for the truth. Make sure you have that written down. Step one, search for the truth. What do I mean by that? So we need to figure out um, if the person that's connected, the culprit, if they're con the person that's connected to the hurt that you're experiencing, the pain, the anguish, the trauma, we need to first find out if that person intentionally, intentionally hurt you. Okay, so we need to search for the truth. Did that person intentionally hurt you? Did they know that without a shadow of a doubt, if they acted in a way in which they acted, they were going to hurt you? A lot of times we uh, we get hurt from other people, but it's not necessarily the person even understanding what they were doing. It was our unrealistic expectations and it did not turn out in the way in which we believed it should have turned out for us. So step one is search for the truth. Did that person intentionally hurt you or was it your unrealistic expectations and the outcome did not turn out in the way in which you would have liked it to turn out? Um, my advice for someone who, <laughs> my advice for someone uh, that intentionally hurt you, it goes a little, uh, an extra step. You need to find out why that person intentionally hurt you. What was that disconnect? Why did they feel like, one minute they were in love or one minute they had love for you and now they feel like they need to hurt you. So again, step one, search for the truth. You need to find out if that person intentionally hurt you or was it your unrealistic expectations that the outcome turned out completely different than what you wanted. That's one. Step two. A few years ago, there was this meme going around, um, everyone acts grown until it's time to communicate. Yes. Step two is communicate with the culprit. Now, again, when we talk about these eight steps of forgiveness, this is not just romance. This is uh, platonic relationships as well. Your family members, your friends, your co-workers. Um, you know, let's say, for instance, let's give an example. We have these cousins or aunts or uncles and they would do something to us. They would bring us pain or something that they did triggered us and we became hurt from it. Instead of going to that person directly, what we do is we call another family member, right? Girl, this chick tried to play me. Or let me tell you what this, this dude did. He X, Y, and Z. So instead of going directly to the culprit to communicate how you felt and how you were triggered, you outsource and then you speak to someone else. That's not the best way of doing it, sis. So one, we're searching for the truth. I see you, Ed. One, we're searching for the truth. Two, we need to find out um, how to communicate, how to articulate how we feel. This made me feel like this, or I felt this way because or whatever. If we start evaluating why we're triggered and articulate what it is to our girlfriends or our boyfriends or our family members, instead of running and outsourcing and telling someone else how you feel or how they played you, go directly to them. Hear from the horse's mouth 
And you'll be surprised, you know, maybe they didn't even realize that this was bringing you hurt or pain. All right. So we have step one, which is search for the truth. Step two is communicate with the culprit. Now we're on to step three, tap into empathy. Now, I know myself, there has been a time where if if I'm feeling some sort of way, I'm not trying to now step into your shoes. Um, empathy can be defined as the ability to recognize or share emotions for another person, right? Taking yourself out of yourself and how you feel and now stepping into their shoes. How would you have reacted or how would you have... <laughs> how would you have... Um, responded if you were them in this particular situation would you have responded differently um would you have reacted in the same way um after stepping outside of yourself thank you so much trish after stepping outside of yourself and now practicing some sort of empathy uh can you now understand why they acted in the manner in which they acted um, that is really important. Again, you know, we can we can be in a heat of the moment and we don't have time or we don't choose to have time to be empathetic for someone else. That is really important when it comes to having any sort of relationship. Now, don't get me wrong. These steps that I'm giving you does not have to be in chronological order, but these steps are very important. And when it comes to healing and finding your triggers, you don't have to do it immediately, but it is important that you do practice it and you do do it. So we again, we have step one, search for the truth. Step two, communicate with the culprit. Step three, tap into empathy. Step four is a really good one for me. Um, this kind of goes hand in hand when I go out and tour with Sip and Become, speaking to women about living in their truth. It's talk to yourself. Not only do you talk to yourself, it's writing down. You need to write down these particular questions and I'll, I'll, I'll share the questions with you. Um, write a letter to yourself expressing why you believe this incident happened. What role did you play? <laughs> what role did you play in this scenario? Um, when it comes to any altercation or any disagreement or anything that brings us malice or pain, we never want to hold ourselves accountable, right? We never want to tap into to see what role we played. Everything is always you, 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 point, 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 deflect. And it's really important for us to check in. What role did we play? What did we do? Um, now, when it comes to writing this letter for step four, we need to be very, very clear on... Um, how we feel and what we write down. Now, here are some things that you can write down. Um, now, first, again, we must acknowledge that we cannot change anyone. And I'm not expecting you to think that you can change anyone. But it is important that we also acknowledge our own red flags, right? So step four, while you're writing down these questions or talking to yourself, why did you continue the relationship after noticing the red flags? This is something you need to write down. Don't write the letter with, <laughs> right, right. Don't write the letter with, they got me effed up. When you're writing this letter down, write down, why did you continue the relationship after noticing the red flags? What were you expecting to change? A lot of times, women and men, we have this, I can change him, I can change her syndrome, or they won't do it to us, they know better. What were you expecting to change in this relationship after seeing any red flags that made you continue? Um, what was the first sign? What was that first sign and why did you ignore it? Again, this is important that you understand that it, you need to write this down, whether it's writing down the questions and writing down the answer or just writing down the answer. This must go on in your letter. This is to yourself. This must go on in your letter. You must write this down and you must be honest with yourself because we all have red flags. We all see red flags, yet we continue. You need to write down why do you continue the relationship? Why or what was the first sign and, and why did you ignore it? So again, step one is search for the truth. Step two, communicate with the culprit. Step three is to practice empathy. Step four, write your letter, talk to yourself. Step five, more questions. <laughs> more questions for step five. Here are the questions. What does your future look like with or without this person? 
we need to be honest. What does your future look like with or without this person? This is what you're writing down in your letter to yourself. How should you exit this door of betrayal or hurt and never walk back in? If you make this conscious decision to no longer have this relationship, what does that exit strategy look like? It may seem like it's not important to uh, uh, face what this exit strategy is, but it is very important. I know a lot of times with parents, people who are in long-term relationships, um, we need to figure out what this exit strategy is. We need to figure out how it's going to look once we walk out this door. What does you walking out the door look and feel like? Acknowledging our feelings, being honest with ourselves, being honest with our emotions. How does that look? And what does it look like if you stay? Okay? What does it look like if you choose to stay in a relationship after the culprit has done something that triggered you? Keep in mind, notice that I'm not saying the culprit hurt you. The culprit did something that triggered something in you that made you feel the pain of hurt. Step six, let's go over it again. Step one, search for the truth. Step two, communicate with the culprit. Step three, uh, tap into empathy. Step four, Talk to yourself, write it down. Step five, continue to talk with more questions. Step six, boundaries, set them. A lot of times when we go into platonic or romantic relationships, we don't set boundaries. What we do is we kind of feel it out and see how things would go. And then when somebody plays you or have you effed up, like Eb said, now we want to uh, set these boundaries and that's okay. But even if you set boundaries and then now this, this situation happened, you need to learn how to set new boundaries. And this is not just boundaries for the culprit, it's also boundaries for yourself. What is now expected of you realistically and what is now expected of the culprit? This is what you have to figure out when you've already spoken to yourself, acknowledge your pain and hurt, now it's time for us to set boundaries, right? What is no longer allowed, which was allowed before or vice versa. So you are in this relationship with whomever it is, and now you're triggered. Now you feel some sort of way, which you probably didn't think that you would feel, right? And now it's time to set boundaries. Now you are understanding that this does not make you feel good. You know that this brings you some sort of pain or anguish, and now you want to set a boundary. You go to this culprit, you go to this person and let them know, like, look, I thought I was okay with this particular setup. I thought I was okay with how things were moving, but I am not okay. And I need you to respect that and help me work through this, navigating through these triggers, if that is something that you're willing to do. So step one, again, thank you so much, Trish. Step one, what do we have? Step, uh, search for the truth. Step two, communicate with the culprit. Step three, tap into empathy. Step four, talk to yourself. Five, continue with your questions. Six, boundaries set them step seven forgive yourself um we tend to be down on ourselves because we believe uh that what everyone else would do what we worry about what everyone else would do once they find out we continue the relationship if we continue the relationship that's why when it comes to whatever issues we have we need to communicate directly with the culprit now let's go back to the scenario of you talking about your cousin or you talking about your significant other you run to these people and you're telling these people about your situation and now you're worried about how you'll be judged if you continue the relationship Relinquish that fear of judgment. Don't worry about the judgment and understand that we all fall short for someone in, in our lives. We are not perfect. Um, you know, it is really important that you not bad mouth whoever it is, male, female, sister, brother, cousin, co-worker. Um, and then when you go back into the situation, you don't want them to have their own feelings that they now have connected to your relationship. So forgive yourself. Understand that um, we are not perfect. Understand that this relationship is a learning lesson. Understand that this is not the end of your life. This is the beginning. This is uh, a way of you to evolve. Um, you are not less than because you are a part of this situation. And if you are practicing steps one through six, it's time to forgive yourself. You are understanding of who you are. Step eight, forgive them. And let me tell you why I say forgive them. 
because you are them. Um, you aligned yourself with this person. So some way, some sort, you are a reflection of this person. And our last Sunday Soul Chat, we spoke, Eb and I spoke about trauma bonds and uh, how these relationships are connected and how we hold on to the relationships based off of some sort of trauma. So yes, you should be forgiving yourself, but you should also forgive them because at some point in your life, they was a reflection of who you once were. They was a reflection of who you were before you've evolved or healed past that particular trauma or that trigger or that situation. So um, once you realize that at some point in time you guys embodied something, you guys shared something and they were a reflection, then you should uh, work on forgiving them. Um, a lot of times um, we don't want to forgive and i know evan and i speak about this very often um a lot of times we don't want to forgive because we believe that by giving or by forgiving we're gifting someone something we're giving too much of ourselves we're giving a insecure self and when we forgive we have to realize that the gift is not for the person the gift is for ourselves we're gifting ourselves with healing we're gifting ourselves with recovery we're gifting ourselves with evolution um, um becoming wiser uh, moving forward before we go into Q&A, I just want to give you some effects of lack of forgiveness. Uh, generational curses, if we choose to not forgive, we can pass that on from child to child and sister and brother and cousin and niece and nephew. Broken home fronts, um, this is also another effect of lack of forgiveness. Baggage in new relationships, this is, again, this is not just romantic, this is also platonic. We have these issues with our girlfriends, and then when we start and we walk into these new relationships, we already have our baggage that we did not deal with with the former. We in, we're in these relationships with these men or these women, and then we don't deal with our stuff. We don't unpack our baggage first. We step into these new relationships, and then, you know, now we're bringing that baggage to someone who doesn't even deserve it. Health deterioration. Um, health deterioration, infertility. We can go as deep as epigenetics, understanding that what goes on here, what goes here affects the gut, affects the body, affects the mind, soul, um, which can alter your DNA and then transfer into your body if you decide to give a gift and bring forth a child. Um, these things can be passed on. Uh, uh, lack of forgiveness and anguish and hurt and pain can be passed on energetically. Um, <laughs> creating space for good shit yes so um with the help of trish um we have completed the eight steps to forgiveness again step one is search for the truth step two is communicate with the culprit step three tap into empathy step four talk to yourself write it down step five go in depth more questions step six create new boundaries Create boundaries if you have never created them. If you did create boundaries, now create new ones. Step seven, forgive yourself. We are not perfect. We are all learning. And step eight, forgive them because once they were a reflection of you in a life in which you both shared. Yes, epigenetics. Like it's real. The effects of hurt, pain, and not dealing with it is real. Um, now, these eight steps to forgiveness does not... Uh, go across in every single situation, right? Um, I was a rape and molestation victim. So sometimes people may ask like, what if um, you, you, you know, you're, you're a victim of rape or you're a victim of molestation. These steps do work, but you do need the assistance of someone who can help you heal. Um, remember, hurt people hurt people. And a lot of times when it comes to my clients or a lot of times the people that I come across, um, when it comes to rape or molestation or anything of that sort, most times the abuser um, has been abused themselves. So these eight steps can definitely help you. You have to understand that we are hurt. And if we do not deal with our shit, then we're going to pass that down. That goes back to the lack of forgiveness. I mean, the effects of lack of forgiveness. 
So, I hope this helped. I hope you guys wrote every single thing down. Um, I hope you have questions because I would love to answer some questions before we go. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, you, you, you have a friend in me. You have a skilled counselor in me. Um, I am here. If you have any questions after this live and you would like to talk, you would like to schedule a session, um, with me, um, you can head over to my page, you can DM me, you can check out my website, see the things that I've done, um, see the work that I've done in other countries, um, see the work that I've done, not only just with women of like uh, ages, but you know, young girls who are experiencing trauma in Uganda, who are experiencing massive trauma in Malawi, and what I do with these women um, under the umbrella of my all girls school. Thank you. <laughs> Even hearing it for the second time. Right, right. So does anyone have any questions? Um, if for whatever reason you don't feel like this is a safe enough space, although it is, um, again, you can DM me my handle for every social media platform. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is Naisha D. That's N Y. E E S H A and then D as a diva. Before I go, any questions or can we just love one another later on? <laughs> can we talk more about why it's so hard to let the pain go? Would you say we haven't applied one of these steps? Yes, I would say we haven't applied a few of these steps. Um, not letting go is one not practicing empathy not letting because you you're not even taking yourself out um of yourself and tapping into their shoes two not letting go is because you didn't decide to communicate if you're able to articulate and then listen to the other persons or the culprits uh, how they feel about situations then if you're practicing these steps there's is nothing but room to heal. If you don't want to let go, you want to hold on to pain. If you don't want to let go, you want to hold on to hurt. And that can go back to you believing that you're giving them something versus giving yourself everything. I feel like you were talking to me directly. Oh, I probably was. <laughs> I probably was. Um, and I'm happy that you received it. I, I really, really am. I'm happy you received it. So these, these steps are really, really important. What about for the other person and if the other person isn't willing to address it or deny it? Good question. So similar to when you say, I love you, right? If you're going, if you're working through all these eight steps of forgiveness and then now it's, you want to go in and now you want to heal. If that person isn't ready because Again, your healing is not their healing, and you have to respect that. You have to respect that time. So if that person isn't ready and willing to address it, you have to respect that. So it's your job to understand who you are, why you're working, why you're triggered, what those triggers are, and how you can move forward. Now, if you're setting these boundaries and then you're speaking to this person and they don't want to receive it, that goes back to respect. We shouldn't be aligned or in any relationship when there's no respect, Right? So when it comes to someone who does not want to receive it, then you go in and then if you want to, after you wrote your letter and then now you believe that you've practiced every single step, then you can go write them a letter and let them know exactly how you feel with respect. You can let them know how you would like to move on with respect. And you can also let them know how moving on looks for you. Now, if they, if it does not look the way that it looks for you, then you have to understand that that's just not the relationship for you at this moment. And you have to be okay with that. So that's what I would, you know, say to answer your question for someone who is not willing to address, because you got to remember when it's time for them to address it, it's time for them to deal with them. And just because you're dealing with yourself doesn't mean that it's their time to deal with themselves, if that makes any sense. Any other questions before we go? Thanks, Trish. I love you. <laughs> okay. 
I think that's it. I think this is the end of my takeover on Queens Recognized Queens. Um, I wish you guys a beautiful... Okay. How about for those... <laughs> I still wish you guys a beautiful Sunday. How about for those who feel like they've moved on but still feel the pain of that situation? They have not moved on. So um, somewhere... Now, with this question, did they move on and they're still in the current relationship? Or did they move on and now they're no longer in the relationship? Because there's a, there's a big difference. So if you moved on and you're no longer in this situation, that means you did not unpack any baggage. You went into another relationship and you're, you're avoiding the work. If you're still in a relationship, something is still going on in the relationship where you feel like you're still not being respected or heard. So whatever their actions are, it's a daily reminder of what you did not do. And then that goes into resentment. You know, that can go into other things where if you don't deal with that particular situation and you're 100 percent honest, 100 percent honest with how it is that you feel and how it is that you want to move forward and what and stay hold uh strong on your boundaries and this person uh in a relationship that you're in a relationship you still feel the pain it's because you have not moved forward it's because that person did not receive your 100 percent there was some sort of disconnect that still was going on either you was not 100 percent honest with yourself when it came to these eight steps or they was not 100% honest with you about respecting it and move forward as such. So you have to go back into the eight steps. You have to go back into looking at your boundaries. You have to go back into checking in on yourself and holding yourself accountable. What role did you play? Is there something that you're not looking at within you? And then you need to communicate. You know, you need to check in. When it comes to pain in any sort of relationship, you have to check in. You have to make sure that you guys are on the same page. I feel like a lot of people move on, sweep it under the carpet, but not everyone heals. That's exactly, that is exactly the case. I feel the same way. That is what happens because sweeping it under the rug is easy work. Sweeping it under the rug uh, is void of you dealing with yourself. What role did you play in a situation? Sweeping it under the rug is lack of accountability. You don't have to look in the mirror. You don't have to say Eb or Nye or Trish or whomever. You don't have to say like, damn, that was me. Like I fucked up. I should have said this. I should have did this differently. Maybe if I would have sat with self and, and, and worked on me, then he probably wouldn't have seen it as such. You're very, very welcome. So the eight steps, it, it encompasses everything. You know, again, it does not have to be in chronological order, but it has to be done. It should be done. Not have to. It should be done. Um, it definitely helps you. Um, and just remember to be honest with self first and foremost, and then be honest with the person that you're in a relationship with, um, no matter who it is, mother, father, sister, brother, husband, wife, whomever. I hope I do not. Um, I hope I save this. <laughs> can someone so once i leave this live it's going to give me the option to save right everyone how can someone apply this to a person and see how how can someone apply this to a parent and see how we played a part um i think when it comes to parenting um the role that we tend to not play because we believe that as a child, you owe me, um, you brought me into this world. I didn't ask to be here. You're my parents. So you have this responsibility, X, Y, and Z, not even realizing that they are humans themselves. So I think when it comes to parenting, there's a lack of empathy. Like with my dad, um, we had our relationships where I just could not find myself to forgive him, but when I took the time to remove myself and to hear his story, like, for instance, my dad recently told me that um, two of his brothers died in his arms. If two of my brothers died in my arms, I'm not sure how I can show up for anyone. Do you understand? He was 18 when he had me. These traumatic situations happened in his life. He did not know how to deal with it because he had his own things going on. So how can he really show up for me? 
We have to remove what we believe is the responsibility as a parent and look at these people as human beings. Yes, they brought you into this life. But there can be so many reasons why they brought you in. So many reasons why they did not get rid of you. But you need to understand that just because you have the title doesn't strip them from the humanistic approach. It doesn't make them less of a human or a person. So, yeah, that's 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 my take on parenting. Same thing with mom. I can go in, you know, we can we can we can do this for days, but it is really important that we look at <laughs> we look at um, everyone that we have a relationship with as just a human being, not the title, because most times the title give you this gives you this unrealistic expectation. Again, let's go back to that. You know, you really just read my life. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So I think that is it as far as the Q&A goes. I think that is it as far as the eight steps to forgiveness. Um, thank you again so much, Trish, for writing these eight steps to forgiveness down. Um, thank you so much, Ed, for having me on your takeover. Um, thank you, family. Uh, Queens recognize Queens family for tuning in to listening to my words. Um, you did not have to, but you chose to, and I appreciate you for that. Um, I guess that's it. Don't forget to follow me. Um, share with your friends and family about the eight steps to forgiveness and let's all heal together. I love you guys. Bye-bye.